What's up with Russian call? Okay, man, awesome. fucking Rush, man. We love Rush around here. You know what I'm saying? We may not be from the Great White North. <laughs> we're from another planet, but we love Rush. Rushy talk. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Rushy Talk with Rush Hour. We are a Rush tribute from the greater central Florida area. And let's introduce the band. Right now we got Mr. Reed Hayes playing the part of Neil Peart coming to you from Reed Recording Studios. Say hey. Hello everybody, yeah. All right. Always we got happy to be talking about some Rush. All right. Then we got Mr. Sean Gannon playing the part of Alex Lifeson coming to you from Sonic Playground Studios. <laughs> He's got funky fingers, that's for sure. And then my name is Chad. I play the part of Getty Lee, and I'm coming to you from the Rocinante somewhere, somewhere in the state of Florida. So this is the first show, the first Rushy Talk with Rush Hour, and we figured it would be fitting to talk about Rush, of course, and uh, probably how we first were exposed to Rush and how why it became such a big part of who we are, hence becoming the Rush Tribute Band. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, these guys are older than me, so I figured they were into Rush long before I was. So, <laughs> <laughs> tell me your stories, guys. What, what Who wants to go first? What yeah, was Reed, your Sean? Reed, why don't you kick it off, buddy? Well, uh, it's not really a lot to say. Just you know, I um, started off getting into you know rock music, and and um, my brother and I were heavy into like groups like Kiss and Van Halen, and you know. Molly Hatchet, whatever, you know, bands that were around at the time. But then uh, my brother got some Rush albums. It was Exit Stage Left and um, uh, Moving Pictures. And I kind of claimed them, you know, I, I took those albums from him. Well, you know, I, have to, I would have to go back and say that I, I was familiar with Neil and, and some other uh, friends of mine had played me some. Uh, my brother was in bands, actually. So he, uh, the drummer of his band actually turned me on to All the World's a Stage way before that and so i was i was aware of rush you know but i hadn't really explored it until then and when i uh, took the uh, exit stage left album and that was it you know but of course moving pictures as well was i couldn't believe uh how perfect how perfect that album sounded and and how everything was just so perfectly done on that album being uh how old was i uh she's you know 13 I mean, maybe about 14 or something like that so at that age, yeah. you know, that, that was my first experience of, of hearing, hearing what I thought was perfect music, you know. Oh, wow. I was going to ask you, Reed, can you remember the very, very first time you heard any Rush at all when you were a kid? Yeah, well, that I, um, you know, I mean, working man, I'd heard that and fly by night, but I don't think I really knew who it was, you know, right. it was just kind yeah. of mixed in with everything else that was being played on the radio at the time. Yep, I and, did. you know, I, I would hear it and I would think, but I think when I heard, when I heard Tom Sawyer, I didn't know it was Rush, but I remember hearing that and thinking, wow, that is cool. You know, like it just, right. it sounded like futuristic music to me, you know, like at the time I, I just thought I'd never heard anything that, you know, with the synthesizers and just, and even, you know, the, the groove, you know, I mean, it, it is kind of almost like catchy in a, in a, uh, rhythmic almost like rap music was when it came out you know i mean i might right. say it wasn't like that but it had this kind of groove to it that i'd never heard before you know and mm. i think it was that you know that yeah. that just that the way getty was singing it caught uh, your ear it was different. catchy that, that catchy line you know over that you know groove you know it just yeah. and just everything the synthesizers and so and, you know so had you uh were you already learning to play the drums at that point or did that no that before Oh, okay. that was before, you were just listening. You know. Do you think that yeah, made you want to be you know. a drummer? Do you think that made you want to be a drummer? Yes, definitely. When uh, when it all, you know, I mean, I, when I was younger, I was kind of like, I didn't know if I wanted to play guitar or it was either guitar or drums, I remember. And uh, my brother was playing guitar. So, you know, I, I you know, but drums were something that uh, I always was, was more natural at. So, and then of course, figuring out when, when, when I finally, realized it was neil and rush and i got the hold of the albums yeah. then i could really you know listen to them over and over yeah. and that's when i started you know i think at first i might have been more intimidated like i don't think i could do that but then later on i started you know getting more confidence as i got better as a drummer and then i started yeah i started learning and i yeah. and i did learn tom sawyer and and uh, pretty much the whole moving pictures album and extra stage left i learned you know it, it, what i you know 
no so, for note is what I thought it was. I mean, I'm sure if I went yeah. back and heard it now, I would be like, oh my <laughs> oh, God. Of course. You know? It took many years to actually play it, you know, yeah. you so know, as good as I can now, but, you know, that's not even perfect or anything. But, so know. what you're saying is that you and your brother were like the Van Halens. Yeah, I was just. Yeah. <laughs> you were. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we definitely. Shout out to Eddie. We, we, we love that Van Halen were like brothers and we were brothers and, you know, guitar and drums and all yeah. that. So, um, so yeah, that all played into it. But um, yeah, Rush was definitely, it was, it was a game changer for me because I, um, as soon as I, you know, got hooked on that, that's all I wanted to do was play Rush. I didn't want to play any, yeah. any other stuff, you know. Yeah. So, you know. That's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty, uh, you hear that story a lot too, you know, especially for musicians. And I think that's why they are so profound is because they did have that effect on so many people who became, you know, professional musicians or hobbyists or whatever. So that's cool, man. Yeah. Reed, is that, is that anything else to add to that? You sure? Yeah. This, this is really, this is their actual true story that I knew it was Rush. And, and this is, it's actually interesting. We had a big, one of those old stereos in our house that had the eight track player in it, you know, the eight track, the phono player and everything in the, you know, receiver. And there was, for some reason, I don't know why, there, there was only a few eight tracks that we had. And one of them was Rush Hemispheres. That's oh, wow. crazy. I don't know where, yeah. yeah. I don't know where it came from, you know, who, how it ended up at my house. It was there though. And, and probably some, what, uh, one of my brother's friends or something, but I remember putting it in because I was just bored one day and I was playing with the stereo. I was like, oh, we play around the stereo, you know, it was Rush, you know, and I, I heard, heard a Rush before and I knew they were cool and everything, but actually, believe it or not, that that album cover did kind of weird me out a little bit, you know, I was right. just a naked, naked guy on the brain, meant nothing to me at the time, but I put it in and I all I remember was I sat there for probably like three or four minutes, just, whoa, and I could hear all of the technical, you know, like the drum parts were like, you know, like odd time. I don't even know what odd time was, but I I was hearing it, you know, probably for the first time. And I I knew what I was thinking. And I I remember I actually took it out and thought to myself, I'm going to get into this, just not right now. Wow. You know, I mean, like I knew in my mind, I thought this is cool. But I also felt like it was almost overwhelming and, I knew I didn't really get it, but I liked yeah. it. I don't know. It's hard to explain that, but, and then it wasn't until years late or maybe a few, a couple years later that, like I said, the story about my brother buying the albums, you know, the, the X stage left the moving pictures. And that's when I really was able to dig in the rush. But my, that was really my first exposure to rush music. And it was, I know I'm pretty sure it had to be hemispheres, the prelude. Cause I put the, the eight track in and I'm sure that was the first song. So you can imagine that's what I heard. And I was just like, I'd never heard anything like that before. I was used to listening to more classic rock, you know, like I said, Van Halen kiss, you know, Led Zeppelin, whatever, you know, uh, but you know, rush was, was a totally different thing when I heard that. So yeah, but uh, go ahead, Sean, what do you got? What, what what's your uh, rush? Yeah, so this, this is an interesting thing is when and, um, one really weird experience. I remember being either in an athletic store or a clothing store down in Miami, when, maybe when I was like nine or 10. And I remember hearing Red Barchetta. Oh, wow. It's the weirdest memory. I can just, I just remember mm-hmm. hearing it in the store. It was so weird. It's probably about 1979 or 1980. But um, of course, like, um, uh, Moving Pictures was huge, and they kept playing the the radio station kept playing Tom Sawyer. So this is funny. So this, you know, I had started playing guitar when I was about seven or eight, but then I stopped and picked it back up when I was about thirteen or so. But um, this is interesting. So when I would hear Tom Sawyer before this is before I got back into playing, I would imagine like four or five guys. Actually, I pretty much imagine i think i maybe told you guys a story i was i imagine like five guys playing all these instruments and the and just the lead singer holding a microphone and i don't know why but for some reason that my image of the lead singer looked like richard simmons <laughs> and that is just the weirdest yeah. thing i don't know why i thought that like yeah, i remember you t- i do remember you telling me that now that's funny. yeah just the weirdest wow. thing but but that sound, I remember just being, you know, totally enamored, like, man, the sound, same thing as you were thinking, like, this is like crazy, like outer space sounding yeah. sci-fi kind of rock, you know, it just yeah, had every, everything sound. about it was, uh, yeah, futuristic it was... and cool, you know, for sci-fi geeks, it's like, wow, this is like good music for that kind of stuff. So it didn't really sink in that, oh, this is my favorite band or anything, but I, I love the sound of it. 
but um, it's funny because that that first experience, I imagine like five people in that band. So anyway, um, probably ahead a couple couple years from that, um, I had started playing guitar, and initially my first huge influence on the guitar was not from listening to Rush. It was as zillions of other guitar players, Van Halen. So. Mm -hmm. I was totally a Van Halen freak when I started playing again. And um, and then of course the all usual suspects of, uh, you know, you have all your other in influences going on. The typical ones, you know, get, remember I was in a Steve Vai a lot at one time. Mm, yeah. And, but anyway, but it wasn't until the very one time, one experience that I will remember. And this was, it was a pretty big moment. It was, Remember that station, WDIZ? They mm. played Free Will. And I had already been playing maybe about a year or so. And Free Will came on the radio. And I was just like blown away. I guess it was the first time I ever heard it. And I was just so blown away. Like especially, you know, of course, just the sound of it. Just the, the jam session or the jam section. Sorry, the jam section. Yeah. Just the sheer sound of it. The drums, the bass, especially, of course, the guitar. Because I had been playing guitar. And I just, that song just blew me away. And after that, that's when I really realized, man, this, this music is, it's like this, this is on a higher level than ACDC, Van Halen, uh, whatever, you know, technically, right. you know, not necessarily just specifically the guitar, but just music, uh, you know, the, the odd time signatures that I was starting to mm -hmm. pick up on. Yeah. The, the, all the different textures the guitar was creating and just that friggin' just the badass chops that was going on between the drums, bass, and guitar. Yeah. And um, so, so, but that was really the moment. Uh, it was listening, it was hearing Free Will on the radio. And um, uh, which is actually pretty incredible to think about right now that Free Will is on the radio. Oh, free but, Will, um, man, that's, that, but, can, yeah. that, could, that would make an impact on anybody, I think, if, they, if, you're, if you're really listening, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So then I started doing what you did. I kind of went back and started researching other albums and um and it was just amazing going going through all the discoveries of every album. Like I remember getting permanent waves and like hearing Jacob's Ladder for mm -hmm. the first time and and uh then and then hemispheres. It's funny, I had a funny hemispheres uh because that was actually one of the last albums in about 1984 that I bought up to that point to have the whole collection. Cause I think between 1983 and 1984, I was buying every album and then I remember going into the record store buying hemispheres. I had no idea what was on that. I didn't need until I looked at it. I didn't even know the trees was on that album. And I, of course, I had heard the trees on the radio as well and was blown away. But, uh, you know, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have anything. Rush was so, right. like everything else was such a big mystery. You couldn't research anything like this. Unless yeah. you knew something about a band, you had to go into the record store and actually look at the records and find them. Mm -hmm. There was no way to know what was on an album or what it even sounded like. So I remember going to that record store, um, you know, feeling kind of funny going up to the register with an album with a naked dude on it and a brain. It just was like so weird. But of course, when I took that record home and listened to it, uh, I think actually I took it home and Tony was even maybe there the first time we listened to it. We were just like, just blown away. Our brains were just like, we were yeah. just completely blown away. Because wow. at that time we had no idea that that was their like prog opus of the time of the most you know most right. complex yeah. music they had written up to that point but uh but yeah my that was those are my first experiences wow that's cool yeah that's awesome man those hemispheres that's still probably one of my favorite albums overall period you know actually i listened oh, yeah. to it a couple days ago first time in a while beginning to end i was like man it's so freaking good <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's cool man well, yeah, Chad, I'll stop yap, and that's enough uh, on me. So, can you, uh, yeah, give us your uh, history? Yeah, I, I, well, I, you, I know you guys have heard, probably heard this before, but yeah, I was like a really late bloomer when it comes to Rush. Like, um, I'd been playing bass for a couple years. I was in high school, and you know, peripherally, I had heard uh, Fly by Night or you know, uh, Spirit of Radio or whatever. But um, 
Yeah, I remember it was the summer of 91. It was between my junior and senior year of high school. And my brother was in college. He was between his junior and senior year of college. Well, he came home for the summer and we were sharing a room and he had a bunch of mixtapes and stuff like that. And I remember he had this one mixtape that had a lot of really good stuff on it, you know. And uh, but the first song on it was Tom Sawyer. And honestly, to that point, I had never heard Tom Sawyer in my life. So, uh, you know, it came I it came on and, you know, it was yeah that's cool that's that's rocking those guys are good whatever you know but didn't really strike me yet but i liked that whole mixtape so i borrowed it from my brother basically beginning to end all summer long and it always started with tom sawyer then you know i began you know of course you can't listen to tom sawyer but a few times and realize it's pretty badass you know (laughs) so right then so you know i'm asking my brother about it yeah it's this band called rush they're like from the, the 70s and the 80s and whatnot he goes yeah i really like them i just got this album it's called a show of hands so for a first time Rush listener, I wouldn't say that a show of hands is probably what hooks most people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But again, just through osmosis, he loved that album. And, you know, him and I hung out that whole summer. So everywhere we went in the truck, it was a show of hands, you know, and mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, this is cool. And then it was just one day we're going to the beach or something. Yeah, this is cool. Holy crap. What was that? Yeah. Holy crap. And it just like, bing, light bulb went off there. And and again, up to this point, I'd been a really, really big Led Zeppelin fan. And, you know, I was a big John Paul Jones worshiper and all that stuff. But then all of a sudden it just dawned on me. I started hearing these bass lines and stuff. And then just the comp, the song structures. And again, this is all stuff from a show of hands. So, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, that didn't, you know, that anyway, making a long story short. So then I was like, okay, I want to find out a little bit more about these guys. So he had actually also just gotten the Chronicles dual CD set. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of a nice cross section up to that point because this would have been 1991. So I think Presto had just come out, you know. Uh, so, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. So I was like, yeah, but I still hadn't really been like hook, line, and sinker yet. So it just it came down to um, he ended up again, my brother ended up again. Uh, picking up exit stage left and that's that's kind of what did it for me because hearing it live and just hearing those epic tunes mm-hmm. right in their prime i mean it was just like yeah you know, it was like uh i just got beat over the head with it and you know drug <laughs> off the gravity by my tail and rushed you know i became a diehard mm-hmm. rush fan you know for life and it you know it influenced uh, my bass playing learning to play it made me hungrier as a bass player you know not that you know john paul jones or chris squire or any of that stuff is anything to shake a stick at but it just you know rush spoke to me and then of course you look at the cover again no internet back then you look at the cover back there and you see three obscured pictures and you're looking reading the liner notes and it says you know three guys i'm like there's no freaking way you know yeah. Then I saw the show of hands video and it was just like, okay, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> take my money. Take my money. It's interesting <laughs> that you heard show of hands before you heard X stage left. And you know, that you were still, uh, I'm sure that had to be like for a bass player. I'm sure just those, the difference in those two as just oh, the Gettys huge. approach and his tone, the way he played, you know, the way he played on yeah. X stage left versus that. That's like two different worlds. Exactly. Know? And that's why it's so. like, I mean, I'm sure had I not even not, heard exit stage left until way 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 later i still probably would have you know oh yeah been a huge rush fan but yeah i think i remember the first rush song i ever sat down to try and play i think was uh time standstill mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and it was horrible the, uh, <laughs> the wall the wall based sound that he had yeah, yeah exactly it, and i had an old uh lotus lotus it was like a uh fender knockoff it was like a p bass j bass combo you know like the mm-hmm. p bass special going through a little you know eight inch dean markley practice bass yeah. amp and it didn't sound like that <laughs> uh, I didn't it probably didn't like matter that. yeah it probably didn't matter to you at the time because you were probably just loving it you know yeah I had the same thing when i when i first started playing rush covers i had the worst little kit and it didn't matter to me though you know yeah. it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna play these tunes and i remember even like playing like like playing along with stuff like big money on like a five-piece kit just yeah. using like the ride yeah. symbols cowbells Oh yeah, ding, ding, ding. you know. Yeah, it was, yeah. But I think you know, at the time, you know, I knew like, of course, it just made you wish that you had all the the gear. But it was still the. I look back on that now. I think, man, that was fun. Yeah, it was yeah, fun exactly. just to yeah. not not care and right. to just to be that. Damn. Like, I just want to jam. I just got to play this stuff. You know, I don't care. Yeah. 
if I don't have the right, we, I know I don't have the right sound. I don't care, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's that, it's that like just raw joy, you know? And sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. when you do get old like us and have played a million shows and all that stuff, whether it be rush or cover bands or whatever, right. you know, sometimes that gets lost and that, that is a little yeah, bit of a shame, yeah. but, but yeah, I remember again, I remember sitting for hours and hours with exit stage left, you know, with my headphones on, um, oh, yeah rewinding rewinding the cd you know (laughs) kids these days have no idea (laughs) yeah i remember dropping the needle on the lps over and over and over again yeah oh yeah yeah that was what uh that was even more uh, but you know you you guys i forgot to mention this you guys both mentioned your older sibling being an influence i totally forgot about that my sister is actually the one who has the amazing musical taste that influenced me she was into Steely Dan, Zappa. Oh, wow. She was a huge Van Halen fanatic. And that's actually what got me into Van Halen now that I think about it, because I wasn't even playing guitar at that point. I would sneak into her room and listen to her Van Halen albums. And um, uh, so she had great taste. She would actually listen to a ton of Zappa. And um, oh, wow. I, wow. I, yeah, it's pretty funny because I, yeah. I had no idea what that stuff was. But um, but, you know, I think we, we do that now. I don't know. I can't remember if she had any Rush albums. I think that was more my thing. Because um, maybe, because back in the day, definitely Rush was seemed like it was more of a guy thing. Um, but um, that has evolved. So <laughs> Believe it or not, it, it, it took me years to figure that out. I never could figure that. Like, like I've heard people say that, that, that oh, it's Rush is a guy band thing. And I always, I used to think, because, you know, I, used, I remember songs like Closer to the Heart. Right. I thought, why wouldn't know what's that's just, you know, that's a nice melodic, you know, I mean, it didn't seem I, like it was anti, you know, woman or, you know, sounding to me anyway. Yeah. So I, it took me a while to realize, you know, I think my guess is, is that like early on, they got pegged with a progressive science fiction fantasy thing. And that's mm-hmm. definitely, a, you know, a oh, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons yeah. nerd dude kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, <laughs> they, they were. Though. You're right. So. <laughs> I, I was just going to say that even the idea that when, when, when Beyond the Light of Stage came out and those guys from South Park were like, uh, you know, it wasn't cool to like rush. And they were talking about that. I honestly didn't really, I mean, maybe I was just so, so into rush that I, but I didn't, I just didn't feel, you know, like I, I almost felt like I don't remember it being like that, you know, like I, I knew a lot of people that loved rush, but I knew some people who didn't, but you know, I, I never got the sense that you were a nerd or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Yeah. this whole nerd thing that, that rush seemed to, uh, that got connected with, I, I never saw that. And I, I maybe I was, I was just not, you know, like, or like, uh, I guess they were even people that poked fun at the fact that I guess if you like Rush, maybe you didn't you, you didn't have a date or something or I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I heard you know all kinds of things. I like, did. Like it, was, <laughs> it wasn't cool to like Rush. You know that that was that wasn't something that I could I really under you know uh, see as, as as being truth other than you know a few, a few people that I knew that you know. But I don't know. It's weird. I don't I I, I don't know how that came about. Like yeah. how did Rush not be cool? But I guess it was that way. You know? Well, I don't know. And it's funny. Well, and you say that too. You talk about your environment at the time you're discovering Rush or even just being a Rush fan in general. Where I grew up, uh, it was a cultural dead zone. And I told you guys this before wow. until mm-hmm. until I started playing, until I moved to Orlando and started playing with you guys. I didn't know about, uh, I didn't know about fusion. I didn't know about some of this stuff, you know. But having right. said that, when I got into Rush, like I was the only guy in my whole high school. <laughs> that yeah. was into rush uh you know so it was kind of so i did feel a little isolated in that but then again i was into some other stuff too like zeppelin which everybody's been to the pop stuff at the time you know it's right where i come from you know right. um, you know that's interesting big read in because we're we're talking about um whether rush was cool or not like well in my in my high school middle school i remember rush was actually pretty popular and considered yeah. cool well, me too. That's what I remember. They, they were always yeah. cool. You know? But maybe it was the either the segment of time before that, like pre, yeah. pre yeah. moving pictures, or maybe it was post moving pictures, exit stage left or something. I don't know. Yeah, and of course they influenced. Uh, we were talking about how it made us want to play. That that's another whole discussion, you know, about right. 
how they yeah. fired fired everyone up to play, which we could get into a whole another rushy talk thing about that. that was, about how you know <laughs> another episode. They were, yeah, well, we should talk about that. I think that would be something of interest for a lot of fans too. That you know, talking about how they just basically got ignored and 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 you know and and the you know look how long it took them you know the whole rock and roll hall of fame thing and just you know the way the bad press that they got and their influence on musicians is like you know i think in in, in the world of rock probably more more important than any other other band i mean that might be a bold thing to say because i know that not all musicians like rush but I do think that they had a an influence of 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 spawning a whole generation of musicians and players, bass players, drummers, and guitar players, who, like no other band ever had. And know? who and who in turn went out and inspired others who may not know that there's that Rush influence there. So you know, Absolutely. it's just this ex, exponential uh, right. kind of effect. And I think that's true. I mean, anybody who became a musician in the '70s or '80s or '90s will. You know, nine times out of ten, Rush will be on that, yeah, on that list of influences. Of course, you, know? you know, even if it's like for a little bit. I've known guys that would that would that would be like, oh man, yeah, I listened. To, I used to learn. I learned how to play Y Y Z and all that stuff. And yeah. and of course, they probably put it down later and got into something else. And who knows? Yeah. Now they they ended up going to Berkeley or something and becoming <laughs> a jazzer. Who knows? Hey, jazz. But Rush was always like there as as uh, <laughs> they always influenced and, and and I think encouraged people to play. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they made you want to play. If, if, if you listen, I mean, YYZ, come on. I, think, I don't think anyone, you know, like even myself, I, I wish I could play guitar and bass like that. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, if you, if you, if, if, uh, if there's any band that encouraged musicians to play, it was Rush. The Rush right. is that kind of thing too, that it actually, that's, you know, another thing to talk about is how they actually made you uh, work harder, you know? And, yeah, and like, yeah. you know, at least I thought that, you know, for me, you know, setting up that big kit and, you know, and all those things that to play a Rush song or to play a Rush gig is a lot of work. But when you do it, it's like the the, the, the satisfaction of, of playing it is is like there's nothing else like that, right. you know. Like, oh, man, yeah. It, it, you know? Oh, yeah. Like the, the I remember the first time I had the PK5 pedals and I was able to play the intro to YYZ, the bass and the keyboard mm-hmm. part at the same time. It was like, whoa, sure. this is so cool. I'm a it's genius. Like <laughs> you know? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Awesome, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I love it. Hey, thanks everybody for tuning in to Rushy Talk with Rush Hour. We're glad you were with us tonight. Uh, look for another video coming out next week. And if you really like what you see, like and subscribe below. So say goodbye, Reed and Sean. Hey, hey, see y'all next time. Keep rocking the rush. Woo! Good times. I'll see you guys. All right. <laughs>